Hi everyone, my name is Martin Kering. I'm the head of the Economist Group's World Ocean Initiative. Welcome to the latest World Ocean Summit Insight Hour, which brings together the winners of our Ocean Changemaker program with their mentors. Today's webinar is part of a series that the World Ocean Initiative is putting together for our highly engaged audience of ocean stakeholders in business, government and civil society. Today's webinar is sponsored by the Nature Conservancy and there are also opportunities to sponsor future webinars. You can get in touch with my colleague Tatiana, see the details on your screen uh, to inquire about sponsorship opportunities for future webinars. Our next webinar will be on science, innovation and the blue economy and will take place on Wednesday the 26th of August. August. You can again see the details on your screen. Our webinars are taking place in the run-up to the World Ocean Summit and Expo 2021 in Lisbon, Portugal on March the 2nd to 4th next year. Uh, the key uh, messages for the uh, World Ocean Summit next year is that it will actually run for the eighth time. It's the global, the premier global ocean event. Um, it, there will be an increase in size, there will be an increase in, in, in focus from previous years. There will be a large scale agenda that will feature 250 speakers with a focus on accelerating the sustainable ocean economy. And the audience size will increase again to around 2,000 participants. We retain the focus on high level conversations and policymakers in the in the plenary sessions uh, this is really designed to kind of seek solutions to accelerate approaches to uh, an appropriate action uh, to the sustainable ocean economy we're also expanding the agenda to deliver industry focused sessions along six tracks so we will be focusing on aquaculture fishing energy plastics shipping and tourism um, and the new central uh, feature uh, of next year's summit will also be a solutions focused expo so we are very much looking forward to welcoming many of you to Lisbon in March next year. Just a couple of housekeeping uh, issues. Please familiarize yourself with the webinar platform. Um, you can see information related events on resources. You will find uh, on the screen in front of you for the, the media player, of course, where you can see today's panelists. There is a resource list that includes a link to our World Ocean Initiative newsletter. There's also more information about the Women in the Ocean Changemakers Challenge. And there are also Q&As with the three changemakers that will be presenting their projects today. Uh, you will also find links to our upcoming webinars and also our main event in Lisbon next year. So without further ado, let's uh, start with today's webinar, uh, which brings together the uh, women ocean change makers with their mentors. Um, as we know, women play a significant role in the blue economy, yet um, unfortunately the input rarely receives the support, recognition and publicity it deserves. So the World Ocean Initiative's Women and the Ocean Change Makers Challenge, which ran from uh, the end of last year to the beginning of this year, sponsored by the Nature Conservancy, showcases leading female change makers working to develop business solutions to achieve ocean related sustainability. And the three inspiring women from across the globe that we are going to highlight today are leading the way for a sustainable ocean economy and they won uh, the World Ocean Initiative's inaugural change makers competition. So really to help bring the change makers ideas to life, they will receive guidance from uh, three renowned female ocean leaders that we are also have here today to discuss uh, these ideas and how to bring these ideas to life uh, as part of a 12-month mentorship program that will start uh, and in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so this session really brings together the change makers and their mentors to discuss their vision for the blue economy, outline the potential impact of the projects that they are proposing and that they're working on, and also detail what they expect to gain from the mentorship. So I'd like to introduce uh, today's speakers. So first of all, we have Ling Kai-Yi, who is the Chief Scientific Officer and Co-Founder of Xiog Meats. Uh, she's one of the change makers uh, that won the competition. Uh, another change maker that won the competition is Olga Lucia Caro Racome. She's the Executive Director of Proco Reef. And we have Katie St. John uh, Glu. She's a Research Assistant at the University of Southampton. And so these are the three uh, change makers and their mentors are Marta Marrero Martin, the Oceans Governance Director at the Nature Conservancy. She will be mentoring Katie. Uh, then we have Susie uh, Pujastuti. She's the former Minister of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries of Indonesia, and she will be mentoring Olga. And then we have Maren uh, Hod uh, Bauer. She's the managing partner and founder of Fint Ocean Ventures, and she will be mentoring Kai. Uh, 
So the structure of today's webinar is really about uh, three key themes. First of all, what are these business ideas uh, that the, the three ocean change makers are developing? And in the second part, we'll be looking at how to overcome some of the challenges that they have faced in bringing their ideas to market. And thirdly, we will look at scaling the ideas to really make them long-term, successful, viable projects. And if we do have some time at the end, we will also look at some of the questions that you send in. So in the email uh, outreach that we did for the webinar, uh, some of you sent questions. We, got a, we actually got a lot of questions. So hopefully, if you have time at the end, we will get to those questions that you send in. But now let's uh, let's start with the first bit of the of the webinar, which will be all about what these business ideas are all about. So I'd like to start with the very basic uh, uh, initiating kind of question: What is your business idea? So briefly describe your business idea, please. And I would like to start with Olga, please. The idea is to enable people to participate in coral reef restoration processes through mechanisms as, a, as such a coral gardening among uh, ecotourism activities and create alliance with companies that can contribute to financing the transplantation of the coral reefs, uh, of the fragment to the corals to the reefs. For example, if a person buys a swimsuit uh, from a brand allied with Procoreef, they contribute passively to the restoration. Likewise, if a people, a family, or a group of employees travel with us, they can contribute. They contribute uh, actively to the restoration, and the, the um, restoration becomes self-sustaining and uh, stop being an activity exclusively by experts and becomes an activity for everyone. So thanks a lot, Olga, for presenting your idea. I'd like to go next to uh, Katie, please. Could you please describe what your business idea is? Um, hi, so myself and colleagues that I worked with at the University of Southampton have been developing a fisheries traceability tool. So illegal fishing is currently a huge problem globally. And one type of illegal fishing is provenance mislabeling, where an incorrect catch location is reported. Now also traceability, so knowing what you're eating and where it comes from, is also becoming a more talked about problem. It's currently EU law that all commercial fish products must be labelled with their catch location, but currently there's no way to verify that these locations are being reported accurately. So that is what we are trying to do. So we have developed a tool using naturally occurring stable isotope tracers with the idea that we can test a fish product at any stage along the supply chain, so picking it up off a supermarket shelf or testing it fresh off the boat. And we're able to measure its isotope values and match it to a database that we've created or are in the process of creating um, of known isotope values of fish where we know where they were caught from. So we're in the very early stages of this project, um, but we've done some proof of concepts. We know it does work for some species and in some areas, and we're at the stage where, that we really want to start building this database and start providing a traceability tool and a service. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Katie. Uh, and finally, Kai Yi, could you describe what your business idea is? Hi everyone, my name is Kai and I work at Shook Meats. Uh, we are a cell-based crustacean company based in Singapore and started about two years ago. What is we work on the mission to bring consumers like you and me delicious and healthy crustacean meat by harvesting stem instead of growing animals. So this is using biotechnology, which we've traditionally used to for medical therapies. Um, like making organs, but now instead of using for medical purposes, we're using that for food. We're still in the R&D stages at the moment, and we're looking to commercialize in about two years time in 2022, 2021, I'm sorry. And we look forward to start in Asia Pacific specifically. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Kai. Uh, so now that we have heard the um, the propositions and the ideas from the change makers, we'd like to know what the mentors think about these ideas. Um, so Susie, I would like to start with you. What do you think about the business ideas we've just heard about, particularly, of course, your mentee's ideas? 
what I see from Olga idea is it's really, really good. And it's one of the best way to engage people is the goal of sustainability because when the people, when the public, the especially all the people that involve in ecotourism with the tourists themselves, they they can be participate. That's there is nothing better to sustain such a business other than ownership. And I see what Olga do here. It's really trigger and taking and pulling the people into having of the program and which is business. And I think by, by making this party, uh, active participation from the tourists, that will definitely by itself sustaining the business that you try to create. But of course, I do understand in this uh basically sitting of of uh covid 19 pandemic and the tourists will be have, have us, uh, freedom to go and travel and coming but i do believe the oceans the maritime tourism it will continue uh coming back and it's gonna grow again i do believe on that on that side because I see where in my hometown, we just opened our tourism the last one and a half month, and it's almost, it's almost closely back to the old days before the pandemic. Because it's, uh, it, it's different. It's, it's more sunny, open. It's no problem for people for physical distancing because it's, it's a huge area. And I do believe if you can make this in your place, taking the people, the tourists that coming to participate on your business and make franchise in many other area, that should be something, it's not only sustaining the, the reef, the, the under, under, under the ocean's wildlife, but also the business itself, it will be very interesting. And if you can take them, all those tourists, to participate active, they have the ownership, I do believe that will go. It's just mm -hmm. the problem is what, what can we bridge in this difficult pandemic time for the next six months? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks a lot, uh, Susie, for highlighting how important it is to uh, allow the public to participate in active sustainability projects. And obviously, Olga's project uh, is, is achieving that. Um, so let's move on to Marta. And I uh, would like to know from you what you think about the ideas we've just heard about, particularly your mentees' ideas. Thank you, Martin. Um, actually, when I first heard about uh, Katie's idea and I watched uh, her YouTube video, that, that was very useful, very clear and concise. Um, the first thing that came to mind was that, wow, this is extremely, extremely useful and very timely and quite spot on. Why? So I've been working on IUU fishing issues for 12 plus years, um, working mainly on policy and, and legal matters, of course, engaging with the private sector as well on, on, on these. And both IUU fishing, as you probably know, Katie and, and others, um, even Susie, who has been a leader on, on this for many years, um, but both technology as well are of increasing priority globally. So I know Katie is thinking of Europe to start. I think that's a very good way to go because Europe is a leader on this issue. Um, but I think um, that there is potential, her idea uh, tackles both the issue, the problem of IUU fishing. It combines um, science, technology, and I think, um, I think that this can create a lot of interest in, in a number of players. So, for example, governments, clearly, I think they would be quite interested in, in listening to her idea. Um, I think the private sector as well, 
uh, at least a more progressive one. Um, and this could end up in, hopefully, uh, I know that that is what our, our change makers want to see, um, not only Katie, but this hopefully could bring in private funding or public funding. Uh, and that's an interesting point because her idea quite, in my view, aligns with the political priorities. So that is a way to explore, um, in, in, in my opinion, um, and we will be working on that together over the next few months. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, uh, Marta, for highlighting uh, the, the, the relevance of Katie's uh, ideas and uh, particularly bringing the public and private sectors together and, and aligning political priorities with, uh, with business ideas. So finally, I'd like to, uh, to ask Marin about uh, the, the ideas we've just heard about and particularly uh, Kai's idea, your, your mentee's idea. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Martin, and the team for putting together this important uh, challenge. Uh, and congratulations to all the change makers on all your, you know, your great ideas and your, uh, your efforts. Um, I, I think when I when I first uh, you know, heard about the uh, Kayi and, and Shio Kmit, and I actually heard about them before this challenge as well, because I think, you know, I'm been acting and looking for interesting companies in this space. Uh, I was very intrigued. Uh, and I think both the combination of, you know, positive impact here on um, on the environment, on the protection of biodiversity, on reduction and elimination of toxins, uh, and the more secure supply chain makes cell-based uh, protein and seafood extremely interesting for a growing world population. So the market is definitely there. Um, and also, kind of, the, we also see the investor interest. So, kind of, my background from from an investor perspective is that we see a lot of interest in, interest in the space uh, from you know starting with meat uh, and memphis meat as one example raised 160 one million dollars in a race and and just in the us q1 2020 more than 930 million dollars has been invested into the plant-based and cell-based protein space so it's clearly really a very interesting space and booming and i think what's really interesting what with kayes and the team is doing is Take moving this, taking this to the seafood space, and and also with your very strong scientific background. So I think this is. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to support you, Kaye, and see how I can uh, contribute. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Marin, for highlighting how important it is that, that these proposals do have uh, investor interest and that there is this link between profit uh, and impact as well. So great. Um, at this stage, uh, we would like to um, have a polling question because we want to like, like to get you, the audience, involved uh, because we are moving to the section about uh, the challenges that the change makers are facing and how to overcome these challenges. But before we do so, we'd like to ask you uh, what you think the biggest challenges are. So can we have the poll question now, please? Uh, we'd like to ask you, what is the biggest challenge ocean startups will face in the post-coronavirus world? We've done quite a few uh, webinars now on the post-coronavirus uh, ocean economy and how the recovery can be a blue-green uh, type recovery. So this question is particularly about ocean startups and the, the, uh, op the answer options are uh, unproven technology, strong competition, access to ocean-focused skills and talent, unclear regulation and governance, access to finance, and uncertain customer base. So um, please, uh, uh, you know, select the top uh, challenge that you see for ocean startups. Um, give you a couple more seconds for that. And then uh, let's move on to the conversation about uh, overcoming challenges. So I'd like to ask the mentees, the change makers uh, first uh, about the challenges they are facing in bringing their ideas to market. So what are those challenges that you are facing uh, in bringing your idea to market? And how are you working to overcome them? So I'd like to start with Katie, please. Um, so we, as I said, are in the very early stages of our project and one of the biggest challenges that we're finding is access to funding and support from this transition between a purely academic research idea into a potential business or kind of actual innovation or solution. So as we've kind of completed the original um, kind of blue sky thinking academic 
question and we kind of know our idea works, we now don't really seem to be um, eligible for kind of classic academic funding. But we're not yet at the stage where we're able to actually launch our business idea or kind of set up <clears throat> a startup. So we also don't quite seem to fit into the category of investments in new in new startups. Um, so yeah, we kind of seem to fit in this transition in the middle and it's, um, it's quite difficult because in order for us to set up our startup, we need to build our database. But well, it's really difficult to collect samples, particularly at the moment, we definitely can't collect them. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult environment to work in in the ocean. We need research vessels, we need kind of access to known origin samples which in itself that's kind of what we're trying to answer but in order to answer that question we need to trust where the samples have come from when we do test them um so yeah that requires support and it requires funding and um at the minute it seems quite a challenge to kind of find that um mm. so to kind of address this um we're just bit by bit trying to kind of get our idea out there, speak to people, see what opportunities they have, build connections and kind of take on really small scale um, projects at the moment to slowly build up our database. But um, at the moment it's a slow process, but it's going in the right direction. Great, thanks a lot, Katie, for highlighting some of the challenges you are facing, both practically, but also more broadly in terms of putting your research idea into business. Um, now I'd like to ask uh, Kagi about uh, the, the, the main challenges uh, you're facing in terms of bringing your idea to market and how you're, uh, you're working to overcome them. Great, thank you, Martin. Well, we have quite a few challenges. I mean, like Katie said, you know, funding is always an issue. Um, but the big for us would be the cost, you know, to get a technology to the market. It's how much it is, especially for food. Consumers eat it every day and we can't afford to spend a lot of money if you want to have it accessible to everyone. So cost is the biggest issue. And then being able to scale it up from, you know, the lab scale, which is very little, and then to a manufacturing that you can supply food for everyone is huge. So there is no infrastructure available out there because what we're doing is trying to bring together what has been traditionally used for pharmaceutical purposes and food and trying to merge them together. So that brings, you know, trying to piece different things together. And because this is a new technology in terms of regulations, that is another new um, piece that isn't really clear at the moment because it is not clear how they want to put together the part and the pharmaceutical <clears throat> part together. So regulations is another one. And lastly is consumer education. I'm not sure how many of you before you heard me share a little bit about Shop Meats have heard about cell base meats or alternative meats, it's very common for people to think that we're the same as plant-based meats like Impossible and Beyond, which are different types of alternative meat. Ours are still meat. We are not able to be classified as vegan or vegetarian because we take cells from the actual animal. We just don't grow the rest of the part we don't eat, like the shells and the legs. We only grow the muscle and the fat, which is part of the meat we eat. So how we're looking to solve these challenges is, you know, on the R&D side, we're working not just on our own, but also working with other startups, industry and academic partners, because I think this is a very young industry and really need to collaborate as much as we can. Similarly, in terms of regulation, Singapore very supportive of the sector. So we get very fortunate to be able to speak with the regulators and have regulations with them. We want to be transparent, so we share our technology progress so they can incorporate it into how they have been setting up their framework. And lastly, on um, consumer education is to try as much as possible to share our work and go out there and talk about what is cell-based meats and what we do at Shield Meats. Great. Thanks a lot, Kai, for highlighting some of the challenges you're facing on funding, consumer education, regulation, very important topics, uh, not just for your, uh, for your business, but others as well. So finally, I'd like to go to Olga and ask you as well about uh, what kind of challenges you are facing in bringing your idea to market and how you're working to overcome them. Thank you, Martin. 
One, one of the most uh, challenges that uh, we have is, is, is to change the, the concept of volunteering to the concept, to the idea of the regenerative tourism. Uh, we are working in communication strategies to involve the people in coral uh, in restoration processes that um, are promoted as a high impact uh, tourism activities. Uh, by the other hand, the scaling requires conducting a pilot test with in, in other areas that uh, with similar con characteristics uh, that allow the to standardizing processes and create protocols to uh, to can replicating the activity uh, in other places. So uh, the other challenges is uh, financial and uh, financial instruments that we have to create, and we are working in, in the blue fund that uh, enable companies to contribute to the um, to the restoration of the coral reef as a um, business sustainability strategy. Finally, as an all we know, the tourists, the tourists uh, in the world has been affected by the pandemic, and we have to, we decide to work uh, in the blue fund, like an active, like uh, financing, uh, like the financing instrument of Procorif uh, during this this pandemic. Great. Thanks a lot, Olga, for highlighting some of the challenges you face around uh, scaling up. And obviously, we discussed scaling up in the in the final section as well, but obviously, education as well and financial instruments are very relevant uh, topics. And now I'd like to go to the mentors in terms of, uh, you know, what they see as key challenges for ocean startups and how these can be uh, overcome. So first of all, I would like to start with Marta, please. Uh, how can the challenges we've just heard about and generally also for ocean startups, um, how can these uh, be overcome and how can we work together to kind of uh, make sure that these challenges are tackled. Thanks Martin again. Um, it's, it's highly interesting to hear the different type of challenges and of course finance um, being one of the crucial ones and, 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 and the one Katie in particular mentioned about being in, in a very early stage to just being given that right opportunity at the right time to just take that one step beyond and, and, and be something more than, than, you know, an idea that you know works, but we, you, you just need that, that first opportunity. So in, in my, I've been thinking quite a bit about, about this and in my experience having to start um, very, very clear plans um, with different possible pathways to achieve what you want to achieve, to, to get that, to take off the idea and get some initial funding. Um, that is critical so that one doesn't get stuck and then the months pass by and, you know, in particular with the pandemia and we're all stuck in, in, in the same place, no, and getting possibly even frustrated, but those plans will help anyone in not to lose your your north and and when i'm when i'm talking about plans i was trying to think well what things need to be very clear so that we are not too idealistic in in those plans but rather very pragmatic and making sure that if plan a doesn't work you move on to plan b at a certain time you know in order not to get stuck not always moving forward ideas came to mind i'm, I'm sure katie we will have the opportunity to talk a lot about this but you know who is your client? Who, who, who do you think is your, your, your real client on, on this traceability tool? How much money do you need to set up the, the, <coughs> the um, database and, and the other pieces? Do you have the right people in place in your team? You were talking about we, not me and my colleagues. Who are they? Are they opening the right doors? I know this program is for that, but I'm, I'm talking about the broader or not, your, your team. Um, who are your competitors, etc. So I'm not, I'm a lawyer myself, okay, I'm an, I'm an environmental lawyer with a bit of experience, but, um, but those are key questions that I think um, I'll, be, I'll be more than happy to put those on paper and be, and be very rational 
and pragmatic at the same time to pursue, you know, plan A, if not, then plan B, then let's go to the next one if that, you know, gets frustrated, etc. So more in particular, I, I'm going to advance um, and take a few more seconds to, just to say that there is, in particular in, in Europe and in the European Union, there are different avenues that I think, let's explore a bit more in detail, of course, but I think could be a subject or, or could be used to, to, to take off your idea, which is what, what you need. Um, there might be some legal requirements that you need to um, um, fill in or, or, or have, um, but I do not think that those will cost a lot. So there might be some risk, quote unquote, to be taken. I don't think it's um, quite a lot of risk, but, um, but that will qualify you to really have certain conversations with those holding the money, etc. So I'm, I'm focusing on, on the financial aspect because I, I gather that that's what Kate is really looking for at this stage. Um, initially, I'm sure there is much more that you have in mind, but yeah. I'll stop here, Martin, thanks. Thanks a lot, Marta, for highlighting some of you know the key questions that need to be asked, and also the bringing the key people together and, and having a financial plan. Um, and, and we'll get to that in the scaling, uh, scaling the idea section later on as well. I'd like to ask uh, Maren now about uh, how the challenges that we have heard about uh, can be overcome. If that was a, it's not a quick quick fix answer to that, but I think you know the. So the challenges all of you are highlighting uh, are this, it mirrors my experience with kind of working with a lot of ocean startups previously as well, that funding access to smart capital in this space, investors that are strategic and know this space and are long-term investors uh, that really understands that this ocean, you know, the stuff that you guys are working on is, is, is more hardware. It's different than a lot of other venture uh, or other projects uh, that's needed uh, and I hope that you know uh, Kaia that I can also support I know that you successfully closed the round so congrats on that um, for not that long ago but but I think you know to think really about this long-term fundraising strategy very happy to support on that uh, second is of course to get customers uh, and you good pilot customers uh, who knows how to best work with startups that can support you if it's customers, strategic partnership, but really think about, you know, how can you do this and prepare to scale with others, big, more powerful players in this space as well. I um, guess you already talked about, but really think about how to do that. And I'm very happy to, to discuss that with you as well later. So you have to build an ecosystem around you that you already have done, right? And doing, but, but yeah, smart about that and then it's the, the third one is is really how to have the right team and have the right fundament before you start scaling because uh, uh, when you start scaling and if you're successful you will grow very quickly hopefully and then it's very smart to have the right processes and you know some of the more boring stuff ready so we can grow more robustly so very happy to discuss those things as well so yeah funding customers and, and the right team and, and, and the, the fundamentals to escape. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Maren, for highlighting some of the strategies uh, you are recommending to overcome the challenges. And finally, Susie, uh, could you just highlight as well what you see as uh, some of the ways to overcome the challenges we have heard about? Well, from my, if I see most of the startup problem is back again to the finance. And, but I do believe in what Olga is doing on, on restoration of reefs. There are many passions in, from many groups of, of uh, basically ocean lovers. I think from diving club, from a hotel that is uh, having chain on diving resorts and thing like that, you might asking them to collaborate with you on on making they they the reef is better something like that so i'm i'm just uh, would like to to give you an idea yeah? two years ago when i was still in this of uh, marine affairs i make organization 
for all ocean lovers. And then I gathered 200 clubs from diving, swimmers, uh, jet skiers, paddler, kayaker, and many other. And finally, we slowly get sponsored for all our activity. And just last year, we finally get funding of almost 100 boats, which is almost $500,000. Just funding. It's only uh, voluntarily sponsor, not, not really finance from banking like that. But we are planning to gather all this uh, activity, making real business plan, and we might able to get regular financing from many companies, or you collaborate with with the banking or people from from the financial uh, uh, sector. I was actually before we on the rehearsal time, thinking that maybe World Bank or can can basically supporting such thing because what you do is really helping the climate change so maybe regard that there are quiet finance institutions that willing to to give you support but of course you have to make it very additional business plan for that but i do believe and very optimist in your field where for coral reef restoration it's many voluntarily passionate to i love it to, to do what you have done and the idea will buy the people basically buy the people's sympathy and also willingness and then when you propose in a good business plan that this is not only only uh fun but can make money more tourists gonna come when the reef restored well it's also that's that will be attracting more invest investment but yes starting is always difficult but uh, i don't know in, in the forest they have like a carbon swap we'll have that things also do with the reef Maybe Martin or Marta can look about that. In the forest, you 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 plant mangrove, you re, you replanting mangrove, and kind of swap and getting the carbon credit, something like that. And then after they grow, you can swap it as a grant. After all, it might be some some way to do the same thing. But yes, many people still not looking at the ocean thing. The environment has the rights already, but ocean doesn't have the rights yet. And I think, uh, Marta, you are a lawyer, so I'm keeping proposed for the ocean rights. Ocean is 71% of our planet. And we only take everything from them, but never give them the rights. If the ocean have the rights, the IUU fishing, it will be the global responsibility. Basically, everyone has to act about it. Everybody is obliged to stop it. So when the ocean has the right, restoration reef, as like reboization in the forest. People worry of tropical forests. And that's only how many percent of this planet. And reef, the ocean, is 71% of our planet. And the safety, the sustainability of ocean resources is very important for us, for the planet. So, I think it should be a way the economies can more propose to the World Bank, to the United Nations, and every lawyer sit down together to grant the ocean the rights. 
Because in the end, we need the ocean more than the ocean need us. Yes, indeed. Thanks for having that. And actually, every second breath that we take in is from the ocean. And often. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Susie, we, we have to move on to the next uh, section, but thanks very much for highlighting the yes, importance I also of, have, of the ocean. I also have to say goodbye to everybody. I have a uh, TV live uh, already running five minutes late. So, No problem. Thank you very much, uh, Susie. And um, let's move on to the final section, uh, which is about uh, scaling the ideas and how, uh, you know, how the plans can really be brought to the next level. Um, so um, I would like to start with uh, Kai Yi and, and asking about, we already talked a little bit about scaling um, and you had mentioned as well the, uh, the challenges uh, in terms of scaling. So how do you plan to scale your ideas and where do you hope your business will be in 10 years time? Thanks, Martin. Um, yes, scaling up is, you know, the, the end goal because to get to commercialization, we need to scale up. So we're doing this in Singapore and right now we're in the midst of raising funds so we can build our own pilot drink plant in Singapore and um, be able to produce just 500 kilograms of crustacean shrimp meat in Singapore. So once we have this proof of concept manufacturing plant, we will be able to bring this plant design to other countries and build that as well. In the long term, we're hoping that in each of the big regions, we will have man manufacturing factories there. So we don't need to just rely on shipping and flying our goods everywhere. Um, our market is mainly still APEC because we believe that's where the population is mainly growing. In other countries, we're looking forward to license our technology and work with other partners in US and Europe um, and look to share our technology and grow and share the cell-based crustaceans with other consumers. Um, in 10 years, I hope to see our shop meets in grocery stores and restaurants and it's cost friendly enough that all of us can just buy a pack of it and have make it for dinner. So that's where I hope for us to be in 10 years time. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Kai, for highlighting uh, your ambitions. And uh, could you just briefly highlight how you think the mentorship program can support your ambition? Yeah, I'm really excited to be working with Marin. She has mentioned a lot just from our brief chat and all that, you know, her ideas, her experience to bring startups in the ocean world to commercialization that is very, very invaluable to us. You know, the right partnerships to get the right investors to partner with people who understand that this is a long term investment. This technology is not just going to be ready and then you will get returns immediately. What we're looking at is a bigger picture and how to get the right people to work with us on that and how to grow the right team as well to build this technology. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, and now with uh, just asking um, Marin directly, what do, you, what do you think about this ambition that Kagi has and how you as a mentor can support that ambition? No, I think uh, I'd love to, to buy some chic meat in 10 years' time, even maybe before, in, in the local supermarket here in Norway, even. So, so I, I love that, that ambition. And I think um, we discussed briefly the challenges you have. And I, I think you said you're just in the middle of fundraising now as well. I mean, I'm very happy to sit down with you, you know, after this and just get you know who are the ideal investors for you guys happy to make introductions to people in my network uh, there as well look at pitch decks give some input i've seen you know looked at more than a thousand uh, companies worldwide so you know uh, uh, hopefully so some insights from that that can support you in developing that pitch deck uh, further um and make introductions um also how again simple process and, and things you can do to you know to, to simplify the process you have in your community to make sure you have the right foundation to to grow and scale that will also impress the investors hopefully so share that and also on a personal level uh you know 
uh, maybe I have something to contribute there as well when it comes to leadership development and how, you know, as you grow your teams, how to best, you know, motivate them, support them, and simple tricks and tricks that, that, that at least I use that can be useful for you as well in your personal journey, Kadi. Uh, and, and then, um, Again, you know, the whole consumer education part is, is really important also in what you do. And um, I'm very happy to, sh you know, to highlight the shield commits that's, you know, relevant arenas where I am. And, you know, I think the more people that hear about the great things you're doing, the more normal it becomes. So I'm very happy to just highlight your company wherever I'm out and about. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, um, Maren, for highlighting some of the, the things you can do. And it's great um, that, that there are so many ways you can you can help uh, Kagi and, and her business idea. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Katie now in terms of uh, what, uh, what you see as the plan to scale your business and where do you hope uh, your business plan will be in 10 years' time? Um, well, I guess for us, what we really need to start doing is actually start slowly building our database. We need to collect samples from known origin and we need to test them. Um, so originally, well, we're kind of, the work we've done so far has mainly been around the UK, looking at the UK shelf seas. Um, but the idea would be then to kind of branch out to Europe. We've only looked at a few species at the moment. So again, we need to start understanding what species can kind of consumers want to know about or um, which, which species governments are most concerned about um, and kind of start focusing on that. And then slowly species by species and kind of area of the world, we can start building up our database. And hopefully in 10 years time, this will not just be an idea. Um, this will actually be being used. And yeah, it will be kind of a tool that people can use to aid in their traceability um, portfolio, whether it's governments or uh, retailers or uh, anyone in industry who wants to know a little bit more about where their fish has come from. Great, thanks a lot, Katie. And, and um, what do you hope uh, to gain from the uh, mentorship program and, and getting Marta's advice? Um, well, in, in terms of the project, um, kind of help really with getting our idea out there and how to expand our network and talk to more people and really to understand as well of where and how our idea is going to have the most benefit. Um, I think it's a really exciting point where, you know, we, we haven't really, we haven't set anything up per se. So um, we're, yeah, I'm ready to be kind of shown the right direction of how we can have the most impact and how, uh, where, where this is going to be of most use to people. Um, more kind of on a personal level, I'm really excited to learn from Marta just how to develop my own kind of leadership skills in ocean solutions and learn how to use the skills that I have already developed, but use these in a way to kind of make a real difference throughout my career, not just in this project, but just, yeah, throughout my whole kind of career and hoping to make a difference in the marine environment. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, uh, Katie. And Marta, what's your reaction to these ambitions and how can you as a mentor support them? Um, no, I, I really like the, the ambition and uh, what Katie's saying. I, I should tell you, Katie and, and the others, that myself, I've, I've, been, um, I've been mentored uh, in the past and, and I did learn a lot from, from that person. We continue to be in touch, which I'm very grateful about. So, um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can use that experience, my own, to, 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 to make the, the, the best thing that, that we could have no, out, of, out of this program. In terms of ambition about the idea itself, um, I, 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 we, can, we can measure that, um, that ambition if you want, but something that came to mind is given that, given that your tool can be so well linked to existing requirements, legal requirements, like, like you already mentioned, now in the EU and in other places, and increasingly in other places. That's what I do actually with, with my job, not like Japan and, and, and the US, hopefully soon. Um, I think maybe you could dream and say, well, in 10 years, why not have our tool be mentioned in one of these implementing um, regulations and, and be you know, being used and, and you know, by, by, by key players like the EU, for instance. In, in terms of um, getting the, the word out there, the idea, definitely. Um, 
I'll be more than happy to, to do that. Um, to include you, I've been thinking of ways. Now, there, there will be different ways and we will have to prioritize, but um, definitely involve you in, in weekly or you know monthly conversations that we have at the both strategic level and a bit more detailed, but that will allow you to observe many perspectives and, and, and maybe to give you more ideas about how to scale up your, your, your you know, idea. Um, but also, I'm, I'm more than happy. I've already been thinking about players with whom maybe I'm not weekly in touch, but I know them. Um, both, you know, decision makers, but also potential donors, public and private. And I'm more than happy to put that on paper to do a, a mapping of, you know, who uh, can be useful to you. Um, that and then, of course, the plan that I mentioned in my earlier um, response, uh, that plan responding to the key questions, I'm more than happy as well to, to review it and, and give you feedback and find maybe other people that can give you useful feedback, people who have been engaged in startups processes in the past, uh, who I know. So it's a, it's a combination of all of these. Um, yeah, but I think I think you're on on track, and I wish I, I was there um, some years ago. I think you're in a in a in a great spot, you know, to be having great ambitions and and yeah, let's make the most out of this. I'm excited about it. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, uh, Marta, for highlighting uh, how you can uh, help Katie and really um, scale the ideas. So uh, obviously uh, now we also have Olga uh, and I'd like to ask you as well how you plan to scale your ideas and, and where do you hope to be in 10 years time for your business? We divided our plan to scale in three parts. First, the, the digitalization, our processes can um, can uh, our activities replicating in any part uh, uh, in the world. Uh, second, our business model democratizations uh, increase the, um, um, the number of more effectively areas, uh, restored areas in, in coral reefs. And, uh, and finally, um, the alliance with companies that that uh, can contribute to financing the restoration of coral reefs, and we expect to be in ten years. Um, first, uh, be uh, working in <clears throat> different with different alliance in other regions and countries, because uh, this activity um, uh, could be doing in some place with the same characteristics. Uh, but, um, we um, we want uh, leaders to restore of restore of restore coral reef hectares under regenerative tourist model and the pioneers um, is the Susie recommended in the uh, question before is the issuance of biodiversity bonds of coral reef ecosystems. Okay, great. Thanks for highlighting some of the areas where you'd like to be in 10 years and some, some interesting uh, ideas how to scale up. And um, w so you, you already mentioned that you would benefit from the mentorship program. So how, how would you summarize your, your, um, you know, your hope in terms of what you would like to gain from the mentorship program? Okay. I believe that to see uh, that to this political um, uh, business expertise, uh, we could take broker reef to of public and private um, articulations and influence in the political agenda to the countries when we want to replicate uh, the activity. So obviously Susie uh, couldn't um, make it uh, because she has another engagement. She can't uh, answer this final question, but she has already given an answer in terms of how she would support you, Olga. Uh, and we're very excited, of course, to work with you and, uh, and Susie to, uh, to make the mentorship a success. Um, so now we have gone through all of the questions and hopefully we just have time for one or two uh, questions from the audience. Very briefly, uh, uh, thank you very much um, for sending your questions uh, 
uh, in and we have one questions on the tools um, in a multi and interdisciplinary operational framework around oceans how do you prioritize your most challenged issues and examples are for example indexes geospatial technology software modeling uh, expert consultations these kind of things so what are the kind of tools that you're using uh, to, to make your uh, to overcome some of the challenges you're facing so just briefly Kai could you just give a brief overview of what kind of tools you're you're using um for us expert consultation is very helpful trying to get expert work both from the food and the medical side and bring in their experience to help us grow our technology mm -hmm. great thanks and katie what are the key tools that that you are using um i think for us the kind of biggest um well, I guess challenge we need to overcome is communicating our science and kind of communicating our idea successfully to potential stakeholders um, and also trying to kind of explain that perhaps certain scientific tools that they've heard of before are, are not necessarily better because they've heard of them and kind of, yeah, I guess using clear communication is um, kind of our biggest goal. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. And Olga, finally, what are the kind of tools that, that you are using to overcome some of the challenges you are facing? Okay. Um, tools. Uh, we are uh, first create alliance with partners that can uh, do um, the same in, in other place. So, okay. And you said um, um, uh, all, all tools is um, Automatization, the processes that can be used with in, on other, in other uh, parts uh, to the world. And another tools is um, um, let the social media strategies is very important for our because we can't uh, to get uh, uh, promote to promote the to the regenerative tourism as, a, as an activities and we need to educate to the people that uh, know that they can do this activity like a, uh, such a restoration activity. Hmm. Great, thanks a lot, Olga. So, and, and then there's a question here on culture. I mean, how do you find organizational cultures and hence approaches to challenges and solutions differ between developing countries and developed ones? Uh, so maybe, Marta, I mean, can you give some advice on, on this, especially as some of the uh, ideas we heard would be about scaling up in different regions and different contexts? What, what about the cultural context? Uh, how do you see that impacting ocean startups? Well, I think in, 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 my, in my experience, culture uh, plays a huge role in, in giving that opportunity or not giving it. So you need to be in the right place at the right time, because sometimes it, it is the culture, but also the, the reality of a, a specific country. Um, I was going to say region, but I think it comes more to the country, you know, and, and in this case. Um, I know the question was distinguishing between developed and developing, but in my in my experience, I'm I'm European, right? So, um, one would think, well, in Europe, you are given more opportunities, or there are more resources to to scale it up, no? uh, more public money available, let's say. Um, but then I've been quite surprised to see that in other parts of the world where we, we would normally not look at, for, for instance, I'm not saying that there is public money, but for instance, a place like Kenya in Africa, in the ocean space, when it comes to being progressive and, and, and testing things, to me, they, they, they are a good you know, player to, to observe. Um, I'm referring to this to, to highlight that distinction between developed and developing, and maybe I wouldn't say that, I would say more stick to the culture, no? and it depends, it depends on, on the culture and the timing. Um, obviously, in my experience, when it comes to private funding in the, in the, in the English-speaking world, but as well where Marin is based, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, I think um, there is more culture to 
to, 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 to be willing to invest, to be willing to look at the ocean and say, well, maybe I'm not putting my money in, in Wall Street, but I'm rather looking at these other places. Um, in, a, in a country like Spain, I'm, I'm from there, maybe that culture doesn't exist compared to the UK or compared to the US, definitely. And, and to Norway, I'm, I'm aware of, of that philanthropy aspect. I was looking for that word. Uh, so I think that that's, that's an element of culture, in my view. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That makes sense. And Marin, what is your view on, mm -hmm. on this? And also in terms of advice yeah. for the ocean change yeah. makers, what is your view on, on culture? <laughs> yeah, we, we, with Catapult Ocean that I led and, and founded, uh, we've invested in 22 companies from 14 countries um, from all over the world, basically, or four, four continents. Uh, and and I, I really support what Marta is saying, that it comes down to both kind of country, you know, there are specific support mechanisms. And some countries have said that, you know, we want to be a leader in this space. Then you might have really good opportunities like you know just you know the Seychelles uh, Mauritius for example as small islands that, that really care about you know that are really is so important that we manage to take care of the ocean for those those countries right so they might have you know great schemes and support systems for ocean startups whereas other startups are not you know so it it all depends it is but but I think uh, 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 Culture, of course, plays a huge role. Uh, myself worked in you know, all parts of the world, and you know, it, it's it, it's you just have to adapt, really. Uh, and if you're not familiar with how the culture really works in the place that you want to scale, you have to get some people to support you who knows that place or kind of <laughs> native to that country. I think to support you in open doors and and so on. As in Norway, as an example, uh, we we have very you know strong aquaculture sector here, and and a lot of those players are based out on you know they're farmers on the sea, and they're on small islands far out in the North Sea, and you know it's quite challenging for for a you know Portuguese or Spanish or or, or Korean super clever uh, startup. Uh, to come there and, and sell their things without having someone speak in the region and really vouch it for them. So I would say, you know, build a strong ecosystem in those places you want to scale. Mm -hmm. That was a long, long okay. reply, but mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, no problem. Thanks a lot, uh, Maren, for highlighting some of these issues. Uh, we have run out of time, so but thank you very much uh, to all those that submitted questions. Uh, we couldn't get to to all of them. Obviously, there were many more, uh, but we we will look at them. And if we if we do have answers, if you do, uh, you know, we can send you something from our coverage and so on to answer some of your uh, questions. So um, now I'd just like to thank all the panelists for your great contributions and. We look forward to uh, kicking off the mentorship program. Very inspiring stories from the change makers and also the great support that the mentors will be offering. Um, I'd also like to thank the Nature Conservancy for sponsoring this webinar. The video and the summary article for this webinar will, will be made available. They will be sent to you so that you have a summary again from, you know, from all the things that we discussed today. Uh, there's a feedback form in the resources list. Please, uh, please send your feedback in terms of how we can improve. Uh, the next webinar, I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, it will be on ocean science, innovation, and the blue recovery. And it will take place on Wednesday, the 26th of August. And you can, again, you can see the details on your screen. Uh, so thank you again, everyone. And I'm looking forward uh, to seeing you again soon.